Hi, my name is Stephanie with Robbins Plumbing, and today's tip is about having smelly hot water. One of the things that I hear most when a client calls is I have smelly hot water, I've been on Google, and I think I need to repipe my house. One, Google does not know everything. I know most things. Just kidding. <laughs> I know a lot of things about plumbing though. There are two main reasons that you could have smelly hot water and they do not require you repiping your house. I want you to take a deep breath if you have smelly hot water. The main reason and the most leading cause of having smelly hot water is your water heater and specifically the anode rod inside of your water heater. So to understand what an anode rod is, your water heater is actually a steel tank. And inside of that tank, so it's iron, inside of that tank it's lined with porcelain, also known in the profession as glass. So it's lined and coated on the inside, much like a glass you know, that you're drinking from. Water is positively charged. Iron is negatively charged. When you have a positive and a negative, they attract. So the minerals within your water that are positively charged, they're going to attack the iron of your tank and cause it to leak. So what manufacturers came up with was putting what they call an anode rod inside of your water heater, which is very simply putting a type of metal within the water heater that is more negatively charged than the iron tank so that water attacks the anode rod before it attacks the tank. Positive has to have a negative and equal it out. So what that can do if you have specific minerals within your water that interact with the anode rod and the type of metal that it is, is it makes a chemical reaction that can smell. It can smell like sulfur or rotten eggs. It's just awful. You're like, ugh. You don't want to shower in it. You don't want to bathe in it. It's safe. It just smells horrible. It smells like you need to have someone come and fix what's possessed about your water heater. Um, so there are some ways to fix this. It's either an indicator that your anode rod has been used up quickly because your water is very highly positively charged and reacting with the type of metal that the anode rod is. A lot of them are magnesium. Um, so at that point it's eating it up so it has the funky odor. You wanna replace that anode rod. If that doesn't fix it, it's you need a different type of metal that maybe won't make that chemical reaction with the water that's within that tank. So maybe a zinc one or that kind of thing. There are rare circumstances I've been doing this for 22 years um, and there's been a handful of times, so it's not very often, but if you're on well water or you're on the outskirts and maybe the city's water isn't as highly filtered uh, here in Phoenix, like Scottsdale's highly filtered, Phoenix is highly filtered, but you get to some of the outskirts like Queen Creek and that kind of thing, um, or some of Scottsdale that's on well water, then you don't have as much filtration. So some of the minerals that may be in that water no matter what you do, they're going to interact and make that chemical reaction with an anode rod within your water heater. It still doesn't need to be repiped your home. Uh, it means that you're in that rare circumstance where you need a water heater that doesn't have an anode rod, which means you need to convert from having a steel lined standard tank to a plastic tank, which they're very awesome. So there's a brand called Marathon. We install them all the time. And it actually comes with a lifetime warranty because it's a plastic tank. So that doesn't have an anode rod. There's nothing that the water is going to eat. There's no metal components outside of the elements that are inside of there. So that's a great option or even going to a tankless water heater. Again, that doesn't have an anode rod, so you're not going to have that chemical reaction. Another leading cause of having smelly hot water still comes back to your water heater, but it's from having the water heater sit too long at too low of a temperature. So if your water heater is left for a long enough period of time at less than 65 degrees Fahrenheit, bacteria starts to build, um, your 
at risk of having Legionnaire's disease built within your water heater. So as soon as you turn on, you know, a shower, a faucet, and you're like, oh my gosh, this smells like death. It's bacteria and things that have been building inside the water heater because it's been left at that perfect temperature where above 65 degrees, that bacteria is being killed. Below that, it's being bred. So this is very common when you have a vacant home and it's been left vacant for, you know, let's say more than 30 days. Um, this is common with our snowbirds. If you didn't flush your water heater and empty it before you left and you just put it on vacation mode. Um, homes that are left vacant and left, you know, coming up for sale and the real estate market's booming right now. Uh, but homes have been left vacant for a while and that water heater was not put to a high enough temperature, trying to save energy or, you know, what have you then you have bacteria breeding. So if you're buying a new home or you're a snowbird coming back, it's the safest thing to do and the easiest thing to do is to flush your water heater several times before you start using it. And if you don't know how to flush your water heater, we'll link a video that we did on how to flush it your own, but you don't want to just drain it. That's not enough. You need to go through a flushing process. Now, if you've already turned on a fixture and you're like, that's where the smell is coming from, of course that bacteria is in that line now, but that still doesn't need to be repiped. At that point, the best thing that you can do is just flush your water heater a couple of times, two, three times, you'll smell it not stinking anymore when you're you know, flushing it out of that hose. But then once the water heater is clean, to go ahead and just run those fixtures that were turned on, say you turned on a shower and your kitchen faucet, just let them run and let them run and let them run and it's gonna flush that through. If that doesn't do the trick and bacteria has been left to build, you know, let's say the home was vacant and people were turning it on, home inspectors and all these things over a period of time and bacteria has been left to build within those hot water lines, still doesn't mean you need to repipe your home. You can actually do a chemical flush on your entire system. It's gonna kill off all that bacteria. It's gonna get everything out of there and have it operating like new again. So it's not evasive. It doesn't mean you have to start cutting open holes in your walls and crazy things like that. There is 99% of the time a solution that's not evasive and oftentimes that you can do on your own. Anode rods I don't recommend doing on your own because even skilled plumbers oftentimes can't get them out of the water heater. They seize into the tank, but flushing the water heater on your own, especially with the help of our video on how to do that, you can definitely get that done. And letting the water run, you can do that, of course, on your own. So it isn't the end of the world. Take a few minutes. You know, definitely if you have a smelly, you know, water heater and you're new to the house, it's very likely that it's that bacteria. But if you've been living in the home for a while, then it's very likely that it's that anode rod and you should just give us a call. Uh, so of course, if you need help with either of these things or you need, you know, advice on, let's say a marathon water heater or tankless water heaters, that time to upgrade or to flush out your system, we're here to help you do that. My technicians are amazing. I work with them 90 hours a week and I still love them and that's saying something. So if you need our help, of course, give us a call at 623-486-4657. You can reach us, of course, easily on our website at robinsplumbing.com and chat with us or even send us an email for convenient online scheduling. And check out our blog on how to flush your water heater and what an anode rod is. And I hope this was helpful for you guys today. 